Welcome back. In video 13, we are going to discuss the steps for preparing a post-closing trial balance. The format and steps for preparing the post-closing trial balance was discussed in video 5. After the closing entries are posted to the general ledger, another trial balance should be prepared titled Post-Closing Trial Balance to ensure that the company's books are in balance. The balances for the post-closing trial balance is pulled from the updated general ledger. Here again is the adjusted trial balance for Minelli Landscape Design as of November 30th, 2015. Notice we have withdrawals in this trial balance design fees and expenses as well. Okay, here is the first closing entry that we previously discussed. Just a note to point out that at the time the closing entry is recorded in a journal, the post in reference column is blank. However, when the journal is posted, i.e. each individual debit and credit is transferred to the corresponding general ledger account, notice that the post in reference column in the journal now contains a reference to the general ledger account number to which the debit or the credit was posted. Likewise, in the general ledger, once we have entered a debit from the journal, we will also cross-reference back to the page of the journal. In this case, it's J2 refers to page 2 of the journal. Notice also in this general ledger posting, design fees have now become zero and income summary now has a credit balance of 4700 Again, here is the closing entry for step 2. Again, notice there is no entry in the post-in reference column of the journal. Here is the journal entry after each debit and credit has been posted to the ledger. Note that the general ledger account numbers are entered in the post-in reference column of the journal after posted. Okay, so here are the general ledger accounts that was affected by closing entry 2. Note income summary has been debited for $29.56.55 and after the posting the balance in the income summary now is $1,743.45 and this is a credit balance. In the office supply account there was a credit for $350 bringing the balance to zero. Likewise the depreciation account had a credit posted $119.05 bring in the balance to zero. In the insurance expense account, a credit of $37.50 was posted, bringing the account balance to zero. In the salaries and wages expense account, notice the credit posting of $1,500 and the balance after the posting of zero. In the rent expense account, we see a credit posting of $850 and the current balance of zero. And the last expense, utility, contains a credit of 100 and a balance of zero. Here is the closing entry to close income summary to owner's capital before posting. After posting, notice that the posting reference column now contains the general ledger account number to which the debit and credit has been posted. Also below the general journal entry, you see the corresponding general ledger pages. Notice there was a credit to Manali Capital of $1,743.45, bringing the ending balance up to $26,743.45. In the income summary account, we are debiting $1,743.45, resulting in a zero balance in income summary. Step four, we're closing withdrawals to owner capital. Notice after the account is posted, we have the general ledger account number 
under the posting reference column again. And here we have the corresponding general ledger account with a cross-reference back to journal page 2. There's a debit to Manali Capital for the amount of the withdrawal. Notice that the balance decreases from 26473 to 25243 Notice also that the ending balance of this capital account is the same as the amount reported on the balance sheet in video 10. The withdrawal account after credit posting of 1500 is zero. Okay, so now let's review the full general ledger and we are going to extract these balances and put them on the post-closing trial balance. So on the post-closing trial balance, we will enter 13,200 in the debit column for cash. Likewise, we will enter a debit balance for 1900 for accounts receivable and a debit balance for office supplies of 650. So we will enter on the post closing trial balance a debit balance of $862.50 for prepaid insurance and 10,000 debit balance for equipment. We also have a credit balance of 119 and 5 cents in the accumulated depreciation account and a 500 credit balance in accounts payable. In the salaries and wages payable, we have a credit balance of 750. Minnelli Capital has a credit balance of 25 243 Minnelli withdrawal is zero, so we would not make an entry on the post-closing trial balance. Likewise, income summary is also zero, no entry on the post-closing trial balance. Design fee is zero, office supplies expense is zero, depreciation expense is zero, insurance expense is zero. So therefore, we can ignore these balances and make no entry. And the same is true for salaries and wages expense, rent expense, and utility expense. All three of these are now zero balance, can be ignored. So here is what the completed post-closing trial balance looks like. Notice we have cash, accounts receivable, office supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, accumulated depreciation, all the asset and contra asset account, we have two liability account, accounts payable, salaries and wages payable, and Manali Capital. And notice that this post-closing trial balance, total debits equal total credits. So we know that the books are in balance. That's it. We have come to the end of the accounting cycle. The process starts all over again in the company new fiscal period. Thank you for watching this video series.